Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today, you did all the work for me for today's video, so thank you so much. I have not done a subscribers choose my makeup video in a very, very long time, so I figured it was about time. So over on Instagram, at Jamie Page Beauty, by the way, if you're not following, I compiled two different types of products. Some were brand new and some I haven't used in a while and I kind of just want to refresh on. And then I also had a couple random, random ones that I just kind of threw in there. And then I had you guys choose between two products for each category um, and in the end, you guys chose the products that I'm wearing on my face right now. I hope that you guys are gonna enjoy today's video. If you have tried any of the products that I used today, let me know your thoughts and reviews in the comments down below and give this video a big thumbs up if you did enjoy it and wanna see more subscribers choose my makeup. All right, so without further ado, let's get right into it. Hello? Let's begin. So I'm gonna start off first with the base. Now I actually made a little bit of a mistake because I initially wanted to include the Glossier Future Dew in one of the polls because I just bought this product and I haven't had a chance to try it yet and I really wanted to do a first impression on camera before I actually tried it myself. So at the end of the poll, I asked you guys if you wanted to see me include the product anyway and 79% of you said yeah so I'm really happy about that because I really want to try this product I feel like I've heard really good things about this especially if you are somebody who does want like a really glowy glass skin like finish I think that this could be quite gorgeous so it really does sound like it's very much up my alley it does also say that you apply this as the very last step in your skincare routine so this is kind of considered like a, a primer, but also a skincare hybrid. I do think this is more of like a skincare product than a makeup primer, but there's no doubt that this is obviously going to very much affect the look of the foundation if this is a really, really dewy product. So this is pretty much an oil serum hybrid. This is what it looks like. It's very drippy. Ooh, ooh, it feels very nice. I'm gonna put this all over my face. Okay, that's a lot thicker than I expected. Ooh, it's almost like sticky. I do really like this texture. I kind of feel like this is a perfect texture to glide over rougher patches on the on the face so that your makeup glides better over them, but we'll see obviously once I actually apply. Right off the bat though, my makeup intuition is telling me that if you have oily skin, you probably would not like this because I mean, it just makes you super super extra dewy unless you want that totally up to you so now moving on to the primers that i actually put in the poll so i asked you guys if you wanted to see the charlotte tilbury new magic cream light or the smashbox vitamin glow primer this one was uh quite the tight poll the smashbox one won but not by much it got 52 percent and the charlotte tilbury one got 48 percent by the way just as like a little side note because i can't help myself but to tell you i did try the charlotte tilbury um light magic cream the other day when just before i was doing my makeup keep in mind i only tried it once so like i don't really have very solid thoughts on it but it really just felt like a nice moisturizer really nothing too crazy obviously a moisturizer is something you kind of have to use for a little bit before you get a good grasp on how you like it but as far as how it performed before applying my makeup i really liked it i felt like it it prepped my skin but it wasn't anything extraordinary but you guys chose the Snatchbox vitamin glow primer i really really like this stuff this is kind of just like a really nice subtle glowy also kind of like skincare feeling primer this isn't something that's going to smooth your skin or anything like that it is just going to give your skin a really nice just natural looking glow and this product does sink into the skin pretty quickly so i do actually think this would be a great product if you do have an oilier or combo skin type but you do want to add like a little bit of a glow to your face this would be a good option because again it doesn't like get super intense all right i'm feeling very moisturized. So for the foundation, it was between the Beauty Bakery Instabake, which is a foundation that I actually have yet to try. I just recently purchased it and I still do want to try it for the first time on camera. So I'll just do it in another video because the Milani Screen Queen did win actually by quite a lot, by 63% and then the Beauty Bakery one got 37%. So that will have to be for another day. The Milani Screen Queen, this isn't really like a new product for me. So I do actually have thoughts on it i have been using this foundation so much over the last little bit granted i haven't been really wearing makeup very much but when i do i've kind of been switching between a couple foundations and this one has been in the rotation i just love it i think the finish of this is so 
gorgeous. It is very, very natural looking. It kind of is that perfect in between where it's not too dewy, it's not too matte. Um, and I just, I, I really love the way it wears. Like I kind of love everything about it. It's very quickly become probably one of my favorite drugstore foundations. So A++ for this. By the way, if you're wondering what this thing is, I had a little tweezing accident and I tweezed my, my brow hair right over here a little bit too hard and it was bleeding and then it scabbed and then I picked the scab and then it scabbed again and then I picked the scab again and then it scabbed again. And it's been a vicious cycle ever since. So now I'm left with this really annoying scab right over my eye. <laughs> so try and ignore that. Okay, so I'm gonna take two pumps of this. Quick little tip, when you pick up your foundation first with your brush, you really wanna prime the brush with the product. So you really wanna like work the product into the brush on the back of your hand before you go into your face. And you'll be able to control better how much product is actually applied on your skin. So this does have to me like the perfect amount of coverage to it. It's a solid medium coverage, I would say. Like it covers up my redness very, very easily and quickly. Like I don't have to work very hard for it to actually cover. I think it is pretty buildable. So if you did want it to be very, very full, you can get it there. And also with the primer and that Glossier product underneath, I'm definitely getting a little bit more of a glow than I normally would with this product. But my skin also doesn't look like too overly glowy, you know? Like it doesn't look like wet. So now for concealer, um, it was between the Beauty Bakery Insta Bake or the Lila B Concealer. So another side note, I have already tried the Beauty Bakery Insta Bake. Such a stunning and gorgeous full coverage concealer. I used it in my last video in my little Q&A. I will say for me, it's not really a concealer that I would reach for for every day because it is so full coverage. But if you enjoy something a little bit more full glam, Stunning. So the vote was 58% Lila B and 42% uh, Beauty Bakery Insta Bake. So we are going to be using the Lila B today. It is the Be Bright Virtuous Veil Concealer and Eye Primer. Um, I honestly wanted to try this because as I was sifting through my concealers, I was looking for a product that wasn't necessarily new, but was something that I either tried a long time ago and just didn't remember if I liked it or not, or just something that I just kind of wanted to give a second shot. And I think I have tried this before and I think I didn't like it. So I wanted to try it again today and let you guys know if it's good or not. Normally I am not the biggest fan of potted cream concealers. There's only one potted cream concealer that I could think of off the top of my head that I really enjoy. And that's the NARS Soft Matte Concealer. That one I love. Um, the reason why I don't normally like potted creams is because I find that they tend to be a little bit thick and drying. So they just don't normally sit really nicely underneath the eyes. But again, I'm willing to give this another shot. So I'm gonna pick it up with my finger, just kind of warm it up to get it nice and creamy. I'm gonna just kind of dab it off on the back of my hand. I don't wanna apply too much. My under eyes lately, guys, have been horrible. I don't really know what's going on, but I'm getting so many little bumps underneath my eyes. I think it's called Melia. Oh my God, it's, it's really so bad. It must be a skincare product that I'm using that's just not reacting well underneath my eyes, but I can't really pinpoint what it is. And it's just so frustrating. Does anybody know how to get rid of those little bumps underneath the eyes? I feel like you just kind of have to wait it out. Let me know if you guys have any tips because I really don't know what to do. Oh, that actually doesn't look so bad. So for a positive, I do feel like this does have pretty good coverage actually. I feel like it covered up the darkness that I had underneath my eyes pretty easily. Like I don't have any complaints there, but I do feel like it does look slightly cakey underneath my eyes, especially on the areas that are a little bit dry, like on this side of my nose and this side of my nose, I'm very, very dry there. And so whenever I put concealer, it tends to just like look kind of horrible. <laughs> um, and it's not looking so great. And I just feel like it's really settling in all like the fine lines underneath my eyes. I don't know, I'm not really a fan. Let's try and cover up this little scab situation yeah i'm not i'm not really loving that which is kind of a shame because my base was doing so well before i put that concealer on so now moving on to bronzer i had the new charlotte tilbury airbrush bronzer and then i also had a new bronzer for mac from one of their new collections called beijing beauty and charlotte tilbury won by a landslide at 68 percent so i'm very excited to try this on camera because i've not yet used it and just for fun i'm going to use it with the charlotte tilbury bronzer brush this is called the airbrush so i was pretty excited to try this particular bronzer because as you guys know, I'm such a big fan of the Airbrush Flawless 
finish skin micro oh my god this name skin skin perfecting micro powder the longest name ever this is one of my favorite powders especially for my under eye and you know what actually speaking of i'm just gonna set a little bit my under eye because this cream is definitely gonna crease um it's one of my favorite powders because it's so finely milled and looks so lightweight and pretty much invisible on the skin. And when I touch this, it does feel very, very similar. So I'm gonna take the brush, just kind of swirl it in here. What I like about this already is that there's pretty much no kickback when I swirl my brush in here. I love that with my cheek color products, whether it's my bronzer or my blush, because it gives me more control when I apply it, because typically if there's more kickback, then there's more pigment, and then you could apply too much when you just don't want to. And again, it just suggests that it's a smoother powder. So I'm just applying it on like my cheekbone area, my temples, my jawline, a little bit down my neck. I like this brush. I honestly didn't think I would really like it because it's a little bit stiffer than I would normally go for a bronzer brush, but I actually feel like it's buffing out the product really nicely. I'm kind of surprised because I thought that this would be so much more pigmented than it actually is showing up on my skin. The color itself for my skin tone is really pretty. I do really like it but it's definitely a lighter bronzer in terms of the application. So if you do not like a bronzer that you have to really like build up, you're not gonna like this. Honestly guys, I don't know if I'm like super crazy about this bronzer. I feel like it's, it's nice, there's nothing wrong with it. I just, I don't know, feel like I prefer a bronzer that does have a little bit more kick to it. This is almost too natural for me almost let me know if you guys have tried this and what your thoughts are so for the blush it was between the lunar beauty moon prism blush palette and the aether beauty blush palette and lunar beauty did win by 59 percent this is what the lunar beauty blush palette looks like it is really really pretty i do really enjoy all the shades that are in here this is a really nice versatile palette and what i do really like about blush palettes in particular rather than just having like a single blush is that you could just always like customize a little bit. I just feel like it gives you so much versatility and you guys know how much I love me, my versatile products because it just gives you so many more options for your looks. Like you could have this one palette and create a bunch of different blush looks by just kind of experimenting by mixing shades together. Um, you can mix two shades together, three shades together, all the shades together and you're always gonna get a different look. So. That's what I really like about it. And I do really like this formula too. I have used this a couple times. We are doing like a bronzy look on the eyes, spoiler alert. So I think I'm going to actually mix Soleil, which is the only shimmery shade in the palette. It kind of has a nice peachy sheen to it. And the shade Twilight, which is this really pretty kind of orangey peach. And just pop that on the cheek. The sheen in this Soleil blush really does show on the cheeks. Like it almost looks like I, I'm wearing a gold highlighter. Okay, so before I move on to the eyes, I am going to spray my face with a face spray. So I gave you guys the option of Tower 28 uh, Daily Rescue Facial Spray or the Veil Soft Focus Setting Spray. And it was very, very close. Hourglass ended up winning by 51%. Um, and by like 150 votes. So we're gonna be using this guy today and I have used this before so I do have my thoughts But let me just spray it on my face first then I'll tell you. Do you see how fine that mist is? It's so fine that you literally don't even feel it hit your face. Normally, I really do love a good fine mist. However, I do find that when a mist is so fine, I find that I barely even feel it hit my face. And so I end up using a lot of product to actually feel like I've covered my entire face with the mist. So because of that, I do feel like I will go through this pretty quickly. <laughs> Besides that, that's kind of just like a nitpicky thing on my end, but this is supposed to give your skin kind of like a soft focus blur. And I have used this a few times and I really don't notice any soft focus blur, blurring going on on my skin. It kind of just looks the same. And so while I appreciate what they were going for here, I just don't think this is a win for me. As far as sprays go, I have three that I constantly use and really love. Um, one is the Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray. This is like one of my favorites for just prolonging the wear of my makeup. I actually do feel like that does make a huge difference. For hydration, I love the Use to the People Adaptogen Soothe and Hydrate Activated Mist. This is 
an amazing product. I've spoken about this a ton. And then a spray that I use to make my makeup look better, to decrease any powderiness, to just kind of settle everything down on my face. I mean, a classic. MAC Fix Plus is always a great one for me. So now it's time to finally move on to the eyes. I asked if you wanted to see the House Labs Stupid Love Palette or the Natasha Denona Bronze Palette, and 74% said Natasha Denona. This was a landslide win, and I'm actually very happy that you guys chose this because I just got this in the mail, and I'm super excited to try it out. So my my initial thoughts when I looked at this palette was I felt like a lot of the metallic shades looked very similar to one another. So here are all of the bronzier metallic shades swatched side by side. To me, I feel like everything up until this guy right here, so besides these two shades, look pretty similar to one another. Yes, they do have slightly different undertones, they do have slightly different shifts of color, but on the eyes, I just don't feel like you're gonna notice much of a difference. So you know, for a palette that is pretty expensive, I don't know if it'd be worth it to get a palette like this because I do feel like a lot of these shades are just kind of like same same but different anyways let's just apply a look and then we'll just go from there um i'm going to start off with beach this is a great transition shade it's a nice peachy neutral shade and then on the smith 232 i'm gonna apply this above my crease and flick it out i'm really just feeling like a nice blown out bronze smoky eye This isn't gonna be super mind-blowing. Okay, now I'm gonna go into the shade Suntan, which is this matte brown right over here. And I'm gonna grab that on my Smith 235. It's a bit of a smaller blending brush. And I'm just going to pack that on the outer corner of the eye. I wanna create a pretty intense V shape here. So I'm going from the corner of my eye down towards the lash line to create almost like a triangle you can see that immediately just like elongated and lifted my eye now i'm gonna go in the shade magma which is like one step above suntan and on this flat brush i'm just going to pack that on the outer corner just in a bit more of a concentrated shape so same idea but not as blown out okay so now let's put on one of these brown shades which one I'm not sure, I'm kind of feeling the shade Silk. It's that guy over here. I feel like it's the brightest brightest metallic in the palette, which is why it's really catching my eye. I mean, like I said, Natasha Denona metallics are always, always good. They always give you that punch that you want. Like, I feel like a lot of metallics don't give you this intensity unless you wet them. That's what I appreciate about, about her shadows. And then I'm gonna go into True Bronze, again, just because why not? which is, I guess, is a true bronze. And I'm also gonna put that on the inner corner of the eye. Okay, just to make sure that the darkness that I put on the outer corner still pops, I'm just gonna reapply. I do kind of wish that this palette replaced some of these bronze shades that are very similar to one another with um, some really nice, deep, and rich matte shades because I do feel like I want something a little bit darker in here and I just don't have it. So the eyeliner was between Fenty and House Laboratories. Fenty won also by a landslide at 77%. So that is what we're gonna be using today. So this is actually a pencil eyeliner, which is gonna be perfect for this look because it's going to create a really nice soft wing. I don't, I didn't really want anything too intense anyway. And I feel like with a liquid eyeliner, you're kind of forced to do something pretty intense. So I'm actually first gonna warm up the pencil in the back of my hand just to kind of prep it so that it will glide on nice and smooth. And I'm just going to create a nice little tight line on the upper part of my lash line. And then I'm just gonna slowly start to bring it up into a wing. I'm actually gonna take a little precise um, angle brush. This is my Smith 203. And I'm just going to run the brush over the, the liner before it sets down and just pull Pull it up a little bit into that wing shape, but it blends pretty, pretty nicely into the shadow. So for the mascara, it was between the Maybelline La Falsies Lash Lift or the Huda Legit Lashes and Maybelline One by 57%. So that is what we're gonna be using. I'm gonna put this only on my upper lashes. Okay guys, eyes are done. So now I'm just gonna go off camera, finish off my brows, and then we will finish this look off with the lips. 
Okay, so for the lips, I had you guys choose between the MAC Shot of Color Lip Oils, which are brand new, or the new Natasha Denona Lip Euphoria Glosses. And again, this one was pretty toy. Um, MAC 1 by 54%. So I have also not yet tried these, so I really just don't know what to expect as far as what this formula is really all about. It says that it is a lip oil, so I'm wondering if it's gonna be super sheer, and if it is, sign me up. So I'm gonna try this shade first because it's kind of like this bronzy color, and I feel like it's really gonna go nicely with the eyes. And then I'm also going to try one of like the nudier colors. So this one is called Let's Go Streakin'. Oh, it's not what I expected at all. So the color of this is really quite beautiful. I feel like it really does complement the bronzy tones in the eyes. It's a nice like rusty red. Again, it's really just not what I expected. I thought that this would be super, super sheer, but it's not. There's definitely a nice amount of color in the product itself, um, but the texture feels super lightweight. It has a really nice kind of buttery, oily feel to it, but I do wanna try a lighter color to see what it looks like. Okay, I'm gonna try the lightest color that I have here. This is in the shade Punch Drunk Love. We're really pretty. All right, guys, that is it for the look. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Let me know all of your thoughts on all the products that I used today. If you tried them, give me your own reviews. I would really love to hear them. And let me know if you wanna see more subscribers choose my makeup videos in the future. Of course, if you wanna participate in the next one, follow me on Instagram at jamiepagebeauty so that you will be in the know. All right, guys, I love you. I will see you in the next one. Bye.